thank you all for coming on to the session today. Thank you very much for us to our speakers um, and for those of you who are um, the teachers on, on the project with us. Um, this afternoon is very much about it again. It's not about you being able to give advice to students in terms of careers and pathways, etc. But what we wanted to do is is really let you see the, the real breadth of opportunities and pathways that are available for young people across Oxfordshire and the different routes that they can take and how those different routes might have, might have changed in terms of what people may have previously thought of them as so for apprenticeships etc looking at the real diversity of different levels and and what those mean understanding what T levels are other post 16 um, pathways as well and also um, we'll hear from Jodie as well in terms of um, that university route too which I know is, is the more traditional route which some of you may well be aware of because obviously you have done that yourself so this is purely just really for your information so that you, you have that background and you can see the way, different ways that students can make it into their chosen careers um, in the future. Um, so I'm going to hand it. We haven't we've got a lot of speakers to get through, so I'm going to hand straight over to Lorraine, who's our first speaker. Lorraine is from Ask. She will explain everything about what they do, but she works with all Oxfordshire schools already, actually, and comes in and runs sessions for a lot of your students um, on apprenticeships and the apprenticeship route. So Lorraine's going to give us a quick overview of um, the apprenticeships and the different levels, as I've said, that are available. Lorraine, I will hand straight over to you. Thank you. Um, can you just tell me, can you see my slides at all? Yes, Lorraine, we can see them. Brilliant. Thank you, Susan. Um, so, yes, um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview um, of apprenticeships and, uh, and information that you can then obviously share with your pupils. Um, there will be an opportunity for some questions at the end. And um, yes, so I'll, I'll proceed. Um, so basically, um, the ASK programme, which I deliver in schools across Oxfordshire, is available to all schools to book up to three um, activities for your students. So this information can obviously be tailored again in the future um, should you want to book some sessions through ASK. So what is an apprenticeship? Um, basically, an apprenticeship is um, offering pupils the option to actually gain employment, so be in a paid job, um, paid a salary, contract of employment, all the same terms and conditions as other employers in the workplace, um, but with the advantage of actually being able to train whilst they're actually in the job. So they will be paid a salary, they will have a contract of employment and 80% of their time will be spent in the workplace doing their job, 20% off the job being trained either with a training provider, um, a local college, or a lot of the larger employ employers have their own um, academies that they set up. Um, typically, it depends on the levels which I'll go into, but an apprenticeship can take anything from one to four years and does go up to degree level and um, masters. So it can take typically um, up to six years, sometimes seven, depending how far um, obviously um, the individual can progress within their organisation. Um, there are over 600 um, different um, options available, standards to actually um, study apprenticeships at. Um, so there are lots of opportunities um, to actually gain experience um, you know in different sectors and fields um, according to what the individual is interested in. Um, the levels um, go from level um, two which I'll go on to the next slide up to um, level six and seven. So typically um, intermediate level two um, is equivalent to five GCSE passes at grade A, C, um, a to C and up to stages, um, grades four to, sorry, I can't see on here, four to nine. Um, we then have advanced level, which is equivalent to um, two A levels or level three, um, diploma, BTEC and IB, higher 
and degree. So level four, five, six and seven is higher and degree level. And then we get the masters up to um, six and seven. So higher and degree apprenticeships. So basically, um, Pupils will be learning in the job, they will be paid a salary, they'll be doing an actual proper job just like their colleagues. It's not just making the tea or, you know, doing menial tasks. You will, you know, the young person will be employed doing a proper job. Um, they, the benefit of apprenticeships is that they're learning and earning, so not accruing debt, um, not building up the, the same fees as um, attending full time university, you know, up to £9,000 a year. Um, they get all the benefits, um, uh, same as if they were doing um, a degree, you know, studying at college or doing a degree, so they can be a member of the um, NUS with all the discounts that come alongside that, um, but also they're learning and gaining that valuable work experience at the same time, which is the big advantage and actually suits some pupils more than others and they will still come out with the same qualification at the end. So the range of apprenticeships. Um, apprenticeships, as I say, there are over 600 standards um, available so you name it there will be a you know an, uh, occupation wise there will be a standard alongside so whether it's business beauty health sport engineering construction there are apprenticeships and apprenticeship standards in all those different vocational areas um, degree apprenticeships um, I've just put an example here of some of the you know, degree apprenticeships that are, are available to pupils as well. Um, again, there tend to be you know, higher education and degree um, apprenticeship vacancies are, are very competitive. Um, you may well have you know, your, your straight A students that are very clear on wanting to go to university, that that's, they know they want to do full time university course but perhaps they haven't realised that there is the option to still pursue that degree, but alongside actually being employed. So at the same time, so, you know, for some pupils, it could be um, a, an option that they want to consider alongside submitting their applications for university to either have as a backup or just to know that there's this option available um, should they want to go down the employment and studying route. Um, it certainly isn't the easy option and it won't be the right option for all pupils. Um, but, but you know, it's something that, that, you know, in your roles, you're able to make them aware of, you know, you, you know your pupils, you know your students. Um, some, you know, are just going to, you know, they're very clear on what they want, um, but, but others may not be so clear. The university might not be the right route, route for them, but they not, might not realise that they could actually achieve their degree um, by doing an apprenticeship. So which employers offer apprenticeships? Um, these are just some of the, the large employers that you will see on nationals. Um, I'm sure you will recognise um, the logos there for including local ones, BMW, um, Sky, British Airways. Um, so lots of large employers offer apprenticeships, um, but many um, smaller employers and local employers as well, uh, large and small, have fantastic opportunities available. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities, plenty of a variety out there um, for pupils to consider. As far as um, employers in Oxfordshire, this is just um, a, a selection of, of current employers um, that um, a young apprentice um, has provided me with this slide that's delivered with me, shows some of the local large employers that are actually doing offering um, degree apprenticeships at the moment and have their um, employees studying um, at Oxford Brooks alongside four days at work, um, learning the, the skills that they need for the workplace. Um, as far as vacancies are concerned, so this was a search that I did this morning and just today, uh, you know, in, in Oxford, OX1, within 20 miles, there are currently 208 live vacancies 
in this area so that you know it's a I'll, I'll go into a slide later on to show you how you can actually look at these vacancies and and, and direct your students to, to sort of looking for vacancies should they be interested but lots of different vacancies from beginning you know level two right up to higher higher education and degree apprenticeships um, available just in this area how do pupils find apprenticeships okay the best way is to go on the government website gov uk um, and actually register on the apprenticeship um, find an apprenticeship um, website um, you can just browse there yourselves and have a look around but i would really encourage you to um, direct your your pupils to have a look on that website to register to set up um, uh, job alerts um, even if it's something you know that they're not considering at the moment that they might be very clear they want to go into sixth form but at the end of sixth form they might decide that perhaps they do want to sort of um, go down the apprenticeship route and, and want to pursue um, a, a degree or a master's that way as opposed to going full time to university so they just might not be aware that that, that is an option um, and, and the breadth of, of different um, vocational areas that they can actually achieve um, their degree in so the Gov website is your best place to direct them to. Um, other places to look, and what I really encourage um, groups that I speak to, is to look at company websites, speak to family and friends, um, use social media, but, but basically to do their own sort of networking within the circles that they know already, um, and, and actually sort of think about um, you know people that they know family members or what they're interested in in hobbies sports wise and start looking at what employers might have vacancies might have opportunities um, that they would be interested in um, as far as resources are concerned for yourselves as teachers um, you will get this as a handout afterwards but again um, the apprenticeships.gov uk is a, a brilliant source for you um, in terms of resources to use for yourself but also with your pupils um, amazing apprenticeship website um, and obviously you're you're very well linked into the lab as well so it, it's really sort of um, using all of the resources that you're going to gain from today um, but also um, you know seeking that support that that we can provide at ASK and also via the LEP. So contact details will be there as part of this presentation that you can get in touch with us after, after today. Um, my details should be coming up shortly. Yes, here we are. Um, and as I say, contact the LEP, they, um, they will direct you towards me. And are there any questions at all that anyone would like to ask? Um, if not now, um, by all means, contact me in the future. I'm sure you're going to get lots of information from the other presenters today. Um, I feel like I've rushed through this, but hopefully um, you've got lots of information and certainly um, can see that it's a very good option to, to make sure that your pupils are aware of alongside um, other plans that they may have for college or university. OK, thank great, you. Great. Thanks, Lorraine. We don't have any. Um, Sorry, I've, I've got an echo going on here. We don't have any um, questions in the chat at the moment, but if they do come up towards the end, then obviously we'll, we'll ask that in, uh, after everyone else's presentations. But thank you for that. Um, if you could stop sharing the screen, brilliant. I will now share. I've got Paul's slides here, so we just bear with me. And we'll just pull them up. I'm hoping. Oh, that's that's yours again, Lorraine. Apologies for that. Close that one down. Multitude of screens to choose from. Sorry about this. And there we go. Paul, that should be yours there for you. 
So Paul is from one of our local training providers and we have, which Lorraine has already mentioned, uh, uh, obviously the organisations that um, deliver the training for the students as part of their apprenticeships. Um, we have, have a huge amount of um, training providers across Oxfordshire, um, all sort of focused in different areas, supporting different sectors with that training for the apprenticeships. And we're currently at the moment, it probably can take us a couple of months, but putting together a, a directory of those um, training providers that we'll be sharing with the careers leaders in your school so they can actually invite some of the, uh, an array of those training providers in that very much align to um, what your students may be interested in and sort of following in the future and the types of sort of sectors they're interested in going in. But Paul's very kindly offered to talk to us today on behalf of training providers to give us a really good example of um, so what their role actually is with regards to the apprenticeship and the experience the apprentices will get with them. So Paul, if I can hand over to you. Thanks very much. Yeah, so uh, Lorraine did a fantastic job of covering off uh, the benefits uh, of apprenticeships. So thank you for Lorraine, that's made my job a lot easier. Um, so what I'd like to do today is give you a bit of an introduction to OAS because we're a fairly new provider within the area um, and give you a whistle stop tour of the programmes that we run here but also the support that we offer um, both for yourselves uh, and also for potential learners and clients within the area as well. Um, so if you can move on to the, the next slide, please. So uh, who, who is OAS? So we are Oxfordshire Advanced Skills. We are a collaboration of partnerships between UKA and also STFC. Um, OAS itself, the project has been around for about four years now. The training school, we're now going into our third year. Um, I'm employed by MTC, so again, apologies for all the acronyms that I'm throwing at you, um, but the MTC is the Manufacturing Technology Centre, which is based in Coventry, um, which concentrates a lot on research and development around additive manufacturing, but also runs a training arm to that as well. Uh, and what we've done is bring the training arm down to Oxfordshire. So very much my job is focused on looking at the skill shortage within engineering and manufacturing within the Thames Valley region. So I work very closely with uh, a number of clients in the area, um, both from SMEs uh, and up to national clients as well, identifying exactly what skill shortage they have now, but also in the next five, 10 years. So we can start to look at and develop programmes around that content and then start to onboard talent from a very early age to, to go through that progression. So essentially what we do, let's say, is we look at the, the, the current offering uh, and then we look to enhance that package as well. Um, and I say my role sits amongst that area of dealing with the clients and what they're looking for, but also supporting the local area in terms of STEM engagement. Um, and from March, we'll be ramping up activity and actually I'll be offering road shows to various schools. So we can actually bring some equipment out so young people can get engaged at an early age and see what engineering is all, all about, really. Um, so we go on to the next next slide, please. Uh, so I want to go through what our, our current delivery is, but also what our delivery model is going to look like moving forward, because we're currently in what we call phase two, um, but we are extending the building within the next 12 months to enable us to offer more programmes. And I'll go through that as, as we go through this and we'll also go through the eligibility of all of the programmes as well at the end. So our current delivery, we offer uh, a level three uh, apprenticeship um, in two different pathways in product design and also mechatronics. And we also offer a level four engineering manufacturing apprenticeship. Now, all of these pathways are obviously you know, apprenticeships so that people have to be employed to complete this qualification. We offer uh, a complimentary recruitment service. So I work with clients to understand exactly what they're looking for in specific roles. We then go through eligibility and we also have an assessment centre that we put people through as well. But essentially, the core credentials of attending any of these programmes is they need a minimum of five GCSEs. Uh, especially maths and English uh, at grade C or I think four or five, the, the, the new number system. Sorry, I work, still work in old money. Um, but that, that is the essential, the maths and English is the key things. We do offer functional skills around English, but maths really is the key area, especially if you're looking at a level four qualification. In terms of the eligibility, that's what we look for as a training provider. That's not necessarily what the clients look for. Now we work with them and we try to educate them that people don't necessarily need A levels, etc., to go through this apprenticeship route. But depends on the role that they're going into, because again, these apprenticeships are role specific. Depends on what the client mandates. So it could be that they dictate that they need 
A levels, but actually in theory, if you look at the standard, jumping on point is, is five GCSEs. So you know, anything between that is what we're looking for to come onto our program. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please, please, Nikki. So this is what our program looks like. So the first year, um, once someone comes on board with us, they are employed. They spend the first year with us on site at OAS. Uh, and this is just our model. A lot of training providers are off the day release model, but this, this is what, what we've used for a number of years. We find that it works best. So they come with us for the first year. The second year, uh, they will be released back to the employer and come back to us on a block release basis. Within that first year, we go through a number of modules, but we also go through a number of enrichment activities as well, because as some of you may be familiar with, with the standard, a, a key element of that is around behaviours. So we offer enrichment activities from anything from finance advice, um, sex education, through to uh, professional lectures from clients that we, we currently work with. Uh, and I say year two, back in the employment, they come back to us on block release, and year three and four, they're solely in the workplace, uh, working alongside one of our assessors, getting ready for an endpoint assessment. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, please, Nikki. So within our first year, uh, they go through, like, say, a series of modules. We run 12 modules within, within the first year. A lot of them complement each other, as you will see on the slide. Uh, I won't go through them one by one, um, but you, you will see there that, that some of that you may already be doing um, within the schools or, or at least touching on. Um, and I say we, we tend to stretch these within four to five week modules. So they'll do a theory uh, accompanied by the practical element as well with this. Uh, the way that our workshop is designed, I don't know if any of you have managed to come, come on site at OAS, but the way that we set everything up is we run the classes of 12. And the reason we do that is we have 12 of each machine or 12 of each kit. So each apprentice, we have to get straight onto the tools and there's no delay in them picking up that, that skills and expertise. So, so we do the milling, the turning, the hand fitting, um, and then in the background, we'd also be doing the maths and, and the English alongside that as well to support those individuals alongside with their employer. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, please. In terms of how we support them, we have a back of house function. Um, well-being, it, it, it's, I think we all recognise that, is a, is a growing concern within young people. So we have a number of mental health first aiders on the site here um, that can support the apprentices. We believe in recognition, so we run a number of awards for our apprentices in-house um, as well as nationally and externally as well. As I mentioned, we run those enrichment sessions as well. But the key thing for us is to make sure the individual is not just supported on the site here, but also supported when they go back into industry as well. So we bring our clients along with that journey as well and enable them with the best skills to support that apprentice moving forward. Um, because we realise it's a big jump, especially from a 16 year old jumping straight into the workplace, uh, especially if they're going to be with us for the first year and not actually hit that workplace until they're 17. If we go on to the next slide, please, Nikki. Uh, and next one. So in terms of where we're going next, as I mentioned, I work for the MTC, uh, the core of our, our, our revenue um, and, and what we do is around additive manufacturing, which essentially is the 3D printing. Um, so it's only a matter of time before we develop the apprenticeship to encompass that. So this year we're launching the additive manufacturing apprenticeship. So the clients that we work with here, um, I know Lorraine mentioned a few earlier on, um, some of the larger ones. Uh, so we work with a number of the F1 companies around here. We work with uh, clients within nuclear, um, space, um, robotics, packaging, pharmaceutical, and everything else in between. So a lot of our, our programs complement a lot of the clients that we work with. But additive is it is the future. It's it's a growing sector, so it's key that we start to embed those skills in now. Um, and you'll see uh, as, as, as we go on over the next couple of years, this will start to ramp up the activity around the additive manufacturing. Uh, and this is one of the things we are looking to bring out to schools as well in the not too distant future to demonstrate what that actually means uh, and let people have a hands on interaction with the additive manufacturing. So this this program is launching from this year, so this will be ready to deliver from September. So we're already raising a number of vacancies around this. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, please, Nikki. Uh, another program that we're offering will be the level four space. And this is quite niche, but uh, the, the space sector is growing and certainly within the, sort of, you know, the, the targeted area that we have here, obviously we have Harwell, uh, got Westcott uh, over towards Aylesbury as well. So we developed the, uh, the Level 4 space programme um, to, excuse the pun, be launched uh, September, October this year. And again, the jumping on point this, for this will be 
in, in essence dictated by the client, but in theory, anyone completing five GC GCSEs, um, as I mentioned earlier, will be eligible to do this apprenticeship. Um, and this is just some of the areas that they will be concentrating on within their first year, um, be delivered slightly differently, but um, similar dynamics and cryogenics will be a, a big part of that apprenticeship. Uh, if we can uh, move on to the next slide, please. This just gives you an idea on some of the job roles within that space technician area we've already identified. Um, but I say we'll, we'll circulate, obviously you'll circulate the slides after this uh, and you'll be able to see, read that in a bit more detail. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please, Nikki. The other program that we're looking at again is around uh, automation and control. So this is essentially a lot of this is around robotics um, and this is for SMEs uh, and larger organisations as well. Um, on site here at UKA, I know there's a, a large requirement for this uh, as there are is in a number of other areas such as pharmaceutical. So we've developed this program again specific for the area that we're, we're based in, uh, you know, in, in Oxfordshire. So this will be again being ready to be delivered from September, October uh, and this is included with an HNC as well as part of that apprenticeship route. Um, if we go on to the next slide please, Nikki. So again, this is just an example of some of the work that they'll be undertaking within this. Um, uh, and some of this we do within the level three apprenticeships where they are exposed to a number of these skill sets, uh, certainly in terms of programming some of the, the robots here uh, and maintaining those as well and learning an element of, of coding. Uh, if we go on to the next next slide. Um, so that's essentially who we are at OAS in terms of say how, how we support the local area. Um, we raise 96 vacancies per year uh, and usually successful in filling majority of them. Um, we are growing year in, year out. As my pipeline stands at the moment, um, towards the back end of this month, I, I'll have around about 108 vacancies ready to go live. Uh, and that is with a number of different clients throughout the area, ranging, I say, from the one man band, new business startups, which is fantastic, so we can support those, going through to our, our larger clients. Um, we do work with national clients such as Amazon. Uh, they're taking on 44 this year. Um, but the rest of them, that pool is predominantly from the local area as well. So it's key for us to engage with people like yourselves um, and look to build that local talent pool from, from as early an age as possible and to get that interest in engineering. Uh, if you do have any questions, obviously, you know, I know we have got questions and answers at the end, um, but my contact details are there. If you want to pick up after this, feel free to, to give me a call. Thanks so much for your time. That's brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Really good overview there. And it's fantastic to hear about the support you offer, but also the fantastic op learning opportunities for the students as well. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in the chat at all. I'm not able to see the chat while I was sharing. No, no questions no. at the moment. No. We will save for the end. Um, right, Maria, give me a second. I'm just having to pull your slides up and then it's over to you. So Maria is from Abingdon and Whitney College. Um, Abingdon and Whitney, they do also, um, are also an apprenticeship provider, so they do also training for apprentices, but she's going to talk to us today about T-levels, which is a fairly um, new level of qualification, which I'm sure you've all have heard of, but you may not know exactly what it is. So we wanted to um, give you the opportunity to hear from Maria on that. So let me just pull the slides up. And Maria, can you see those? Um, yes, yes, I can. Perfect. I shall hand over to you then. Lovely. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm Maria Brown and uh, as Nikki said, I'm from Abingdon and Whitney College and my role is uh, events and schools liaison. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, um, Nikki, am I changing the slide or are you changing it? I've just changed it. Is it not changed at your end? No, I'm still on my first slide. Um, it's not in presenting mode, Nikki, so that might be why. It's, it's not in PowerPoint presentation mode. Oh, it is, on my, it is on mine. Right, I'll stop sharing and I'll reshare. Okay. We had this problem the other week with some slides. Sorry, bear with me, Maria. That's OK. Um, I shall try and open it up again and see if it likes it better. All right. Can you see that? 
It's so still the first slide. Um, we offer vocation at no. No. We can still see all the slides on the left hand side. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's not showing that in mine. Hold on, I'll close it all down again. <laughs> Sorry about this, everyone. <laughs> Technical glitches. I'm closing everything down. Right, This, if this doesn't work, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully it will. Otherwise, perhaps you can try from your end, Maria. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking that yeah. um, they're poised to uh, to try that. Right. No, I think we're still. Have you, have you clicked on enable? Because we're going to see enabled editing. Is it? I'm assuming you've clicked on that. Yeah, everything. Yeah. It's all as normal, and I'm on the next slide now. No, no still don't see it. No. I'll I'll try and share it from from my end. Just bear with Brilliant. me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, that looks good to go. Perfect. OK, um, there we go. OK, so um, so as a college, uh, we offer vocational and technical qualifications. Um, sorry, it's not changing for me now. <laughs> not having much luck. Let me try again. Just bear with me. Ah, so um, Vocational qualifications, well, they're practical qualifications, as I'm, I'm sure you all know, and um, they're really aimed at launching students into the workplace by preparing them with the, the skills that they need uh, to do a particular job. So why choose Abingdon and Whitney College? Um, we're currently the most successful college in Oxfordshire, and we are in the top 5% of colleges nationally and 97% of our students progress to their chosen destination. Uh, we win lots of awards and uh, we recently had a highly successful HE inspection. So I'll just let you take that in for a second. So that's the range of qualifications that we currently offer. Um, so um, I know apprenticeships have been covered in great detail, so I won't dwell on those uh, because uh, Lorraine and Paul already did a great job. But uh, as you can see, we offer lots of other uh, qualifications, both BTECs and T levels across several campuses. So T levels are brand new. Um, they um, they only came in recently. We only started uh, offering them uh, from September officially, and they sort of combine classroom learning with an industry placement, and they help prepare students for the workplace. So these are the ones that we currently offer. Um, as you can see, there's there's three, and they started in September. Um, just gone. And then coming up for September 2022, 20, uh, we have these new T levels uh, going to be available from this coming September. Okay. And then just to give you a little bit of a comparison between uh, T levels and A levels, uh, well, both BTEX and T levels versus A levels, I should say. Uh, with the uh, vocational qualifications, students just tend to study one subject. So with A levels, they pick three usually. Um, with T levels and uh, BTEX, they tend to just study the one subject that they're really passionate about. There's a lot of um, ongoing assessment um, as well as exams. So they're not loaded into exams at the end in the same way as A-levels are. It's more of a combination of assessments and exams. And then for the T-level, um, there's a large element of work placement. So that over the two-year T-level, that equates to about 45 days 
or 315 hours of um, work placements. And although on that slide it says work experience, it, a work placement is, is different in that um, it's not so much shadowing people, it's more that the students are given actual projects to work on independently, so they're treated like an actual employee and they're given real work to do. So. OK, just bear with me while I change. So these are our three main campuses, Abingdon, Whitney and Common Lees. Um, you probably know Abingdon and Whitney, but Common Lees is our big farm campus just outside Whitney. It's about three miles away and um, we do courses there like animal care, agriculture. We also do countryside management and conservation and lots of um, equine related courses. And we do courses right up to degree level over at Common Lees Farm. We also have a new um, BISTA Construction Skills Centre where we do construction apprenticeships and uh, that's all brand new. Uh, the staff that we have in college tend to be industry experts, so all of our staff have got a background um, in the world of work in the subject that they're teaching. So, for instance, uh, Nicola, who's one of our performing arts um, tutors, she actually performed for many years on stage in the West End and she played Elle in Legally Blonde. Uh, she starred in a number of um, high profile productions. Um, another of our tutors, Rich Cartwright, who uh, tutors in engineering, he worked on the Hadron Collider in CERN. And so all, all of our teaching staff, so our equine staff, one of them ran her own yard and uh, livery. So they've all got lots of relevant experience. We've got great facilities and um, the top picture shows you our hairdressing salon in Whitney and it's a real working salon where members of the public can come in and book hair appointments and the students get to work on them obviously under close supervision when you know they're in the first few months and as they progress then they can work independently with clients and it gives them a real salon experience from taking appointments you know to preparing and working on clients. Uh, that bottom picture shows our motor vehicle workshop over in Abingdon. Our students work on real cars. The students own uh, the college rather own six or seven cars, which the students do everything from stripping down to the engines to installing transmission systems, changing tires, the whole lot. So um, it's a, an excellent facility. We also work in partnership. So all our hairdressing. Um, uh, courses are run in conjunction with the Lee Stafford Academy and Lee's a celebrity hairdresser. He comes in and he gives lots of demonstrations on all the latest techniques. He's absolutely brilliant. He really inspires the students and staff. And that's across both Abingdon and Whitney. And then in Abingdon, we've partnered up with Abingdon United for our football academy, which is proving really popular. Um, I'm aware that I've overrun a little bit, so um, do, uh, I'll skip through these really quickly and finish so that I can hand over. Uh, but this just gives you an idea of the qualifications that are needed to get onto the different levels of qualifications. Um, I know these presentations are going to be shared, so I'll skip through these so that you can look at them afterwards. Uh, bear with me. Uh, just to say we've invested a lot in our campuses recently so that's our new livestock technology centre over at Common Lees Farm and this is our new um, BISTA skills centre and over in Abingdon we're currently having built a brand new 1.2 million green construction centre so as of September in Abingdon we'll be offering construction courses uh, that are more in tune with sustainability and uh, green energy sources. Uh, I'll skip over apprenticeships because it's been covered, but just to say that these are the apprenticeships we offer. And the most important thing is if you do have any students who are thinking about college to do a BTEC or a T-level or an apprenticeship, uh, we have lots of open days and the best way really to find out more is for them to come along to open day. Right, I'll uh, I'll hand over now to the next person. Thank you.
That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Maria. So much that goes on and so so many um, brilliant um, resources and course there are such a variety of courses that the students can do with Aberdeen and Whitney. It's fantastic and certainly good to be aware of that and the different routes um, that our young people can take in terms of what suits them better if they do want to take those more vocational routes. Um, so Jody, um, you're our final speaker from Oxford Brooks. Are you all right? If you can stop sharing, Maria, your screen, because I know Jodie was going to share her own slides. Bear with me uh, a moment. Gosh. Right, I, I'm not currently seeing the... Op oh, stop presenting. There we go. Sorry, there's so <laughs> many things on my screen at the moment. <laughs> Hopefully I'll disappear Brilliant. now. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, Jodie, if I can hand over to you and you can give um, a quick update on how going into higher education. You're on mute, Jodie. That would help. Um, Someone always has to do that. that. So. Um, so before I share my slides, I thought I'd tell you a bit about myself. Um, so my name's Jodie. I work at Oxford Brooks. I have just moved into our admissions team. Um, so super busy with January deadline for UCAS applications coming up. Um, but before that, I worked in the UK recruitment team, um, working in schools, delivering information about higher education. Um, but before that, I actually graduated Oxford Brooks myself with a degree in early childhood studies. Um, and interestingly enough, actually, before that, I went to Adam and Whitney College and did a BTEC at Whitney um, in early childhood studies. Um, so there's so much I could say about higher education. We do talks for hours. Um, at, so it is kind of more just, I guess, debunking some of the myths um, people have around higher education. So you probably will see yourselves for a minute. Um, hopefully you can all see this now. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Um, so this is just kind of an overview, I guess, of a bit of what we've spoke about already. Um, so uh, we at university are a level four qualification. Um, so to get to university, you have to have done a level three qualification. Um, and then we go all the way up to level five and six. And if you go on to do a postgrad level seven, and you can see how that links with the apprenticeships mentioned earlier. Um, so one of the big things to mention is there is lots of level three qualifications we can accept to university. Um, I think, as said at the start, university is a traditional aspect and traditionally you take three year levels and go to university. Um, and that is definitely not the case anymore. So I myself did a BTEC. Um, here at Oxford Brooks, we're going to be accepting T levels, vocational qualifications, um, and it can be two A levels and a BTEC, etc. Um, we use something at Oxford Brooks, not every university does, um, called UCAS tariff points. So we accept any qualification you can find on this. And there is hundreds. Um, there is even some dance qualifications that we accept or music qualifications, etc. Um, so Go and have a look if you want to know what kind of things we accept on here. It's just called UCAS Tariff Calculator. Um, the big thing to say is that there is so many different university courses and universities. Um, so I just went on to UCAS and put courses in for 2022. And there is currently showing 35,678 courses at 344 providers. So there is so many courses out there. There really is something for everyone. We also have a range of different courses. So most of you guys will probably know about the honours degree, um, particularly as teachers, you probably did uh, either the primary teaching, secondary teaching, honours degree. Um, and that's very traditional, three years, sometimes four, if you decide to do a placement um, that you, consider but we also have something called a foundation de course Oops, sorry foundation course these are one year courses um, that prepare students for university um, so for example if they uh, haven't quite done a portfolio or an art subject we have things around that 
if they're interested, for example, in humanities, but maybe didn't quite get the entry requirements, um, they have a lot lower UCAS tariff points. So 72 UCAS points is equivalent to three Ds at A level. Um, and then successful completion of this course, they can then go on to any undergrad humanities course. Um, so it's kind of like year zero, I'd like to say. Um, and a lot of people get a bit worried about these, but actually it's been proven that people that do these get the same or if not higher than someone who just goes straight on to a undergrad course because they have that extra year to gain knowledge and also just get used to being at university. Um, the next one we have is a foundation degree. So very similar name, but very different. These are two year degrees, uh, what tend to be based at partner colleges. So Avon and Whitney is one of them um, that we have. And these can also be found off our website. Um, so under the college partnerships and you can find out all of the college partnerships we have and the courses. So they tend to be two years. They are um, tend to be a lot more flexible, um, tend to have more locations closer to home for students that want that. Um, and once you've done the two year foundation degree, you can then come on to either one of our honours degrees or a Pacific top up to complete the course. And then also here at Brooks, we do have a lot of higher degrees and degree apprenticeships that we've already mentioned. So the biggest thing to take out of this is there is an option for everyone. Um, I think looking at the subject choices we also have now, um, so it's not quite 50,000 anymore, but they are a lot more practical and hands-on. So my degree in early childhood studies, we had uh, at least three modules where we were out on placement doing stuff um, to then write about. Um, there's things like obviously motorsports, architecture, and they're a lot more hands-on. And actually a lot more of the assessment is group work and discussions. Um, there is still the traditional uh, universities out there that require free A stars. And it's all about your exams at the end of each module and that's it. But there's also lots of universities out there that have completely different subjects like Japanese studies. I never realized you could do a degree in that, um, that really can be for anyone, um, a lot more hands-on and a lot more support. Um, so I just wanted to go on to how to pay. So this is a big worry for a lot of people, um, but all of the courses I've mentioned, so the foundation degree, foundation course, um, and the honours course are all, uh, if you're a UK student, all eligible for the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan, along with lots of scholarships uh, and additional bursaries, particularly if you're looking at any NHS course. Um, so there is lots and lots of support um, out there. Um, and it is a very simple process when you understand, I think, having been through it when I was a student, I was like, oh, it's really scary. But actually, um, the best thing to do is go to open days. Um, they then will need to register with UCAS, write a personal statement, what I think a lot of people worry about. Um, but actually, I tend to say, what about when you apply for your job? Did you write um, a statement of what, why you went for your job? It's a very similar thing. Um, and then you can see the deadlines that go on from there. Um, so there is lots of information about student finance and eligibility on the student finance website. Um, obviously, UCAS is the place you apply and there is all the courses on there, all the different universities. Um, and also, obviously, our personal web page. We have open days campus tours. Um, but also lots of information, particularly around support, um, what I think is actually the reason I personally chose to come to Oxford Brooks with my dyslexia was the wide range of support services they had um, to help me. Um, so, yeah, the key thing is it university isn't all kind of that traditional free A's 
uh, doing a very traditional lectures and exams at the end. There is a university for everyone with different entry requirements, different courses. Um, my course had pretty much completely coursework. Um, so it's really about opening, I guess, your eyes and the student's eyes to the fact that I guess it isn't what people would say is a typical in the movies situation. Okay, so that's the short version. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Jody. That's really helpful. And yeah, really good actually to reflect on on how much it has has changed. Um, certainly since when I was at university in terms of the sheer variety of courses and like you say the different entry routes etc the different levels of qualifications you can do um, really interesting to actually to actually know that and see that so thank you very much for that and I know that's the same around a lot of, a lot of the universities have that variety now so um, that's great I don't have any questions in the chat at the moment but do any massive thank you to all our speakers Paul Smith actually from um, the MTC so from OA Yes, has had to um, disappear with, for something urgent. But does anyone have any questions for any of our speakers at all? You can either put your hand up um, or just come off mute or pop something in the chat. <coughs> no, nope, all good from Paul Upstone. I think, I, to be honest, I think it really, was really clear. I think they're brilliant presentations. Um, I think real clarity in terms of what those different routes look like um, and, and what the opportunities are. So thank you all very much to the speakers um, for today's session. I really enjoyed it as well. Um, I, if anyone has got any of the teachers on the chat have got any questions about anything else to do with the programme, to do with the evaluation, anything like that, do stay on because um, um, Susan and I can be around for the next five or ten minutes to um, answer anything else. But otherwise, oh, Jack's just typing something at the moment. So let me wait, wait to see what he's. And Maria's typing as well. Oh, everyone's typing now. <laughs> I'm just double check. Oh, Jack's just saying thank you. No, thank you. Really. I, if there, if anyone does want to hang around to ask any other questions from Susan and I, um, do hang on. Otherwise, thank you all very much for the session today, and we we'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Um, OS slides. We'll get all the slides out as soon as possible, Paul. No problem. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.